Chapter 21, The Last Straw. Musisa's friends by now were more alarmed than ever over his being gone so long. They felt orphaned without him. Every once in a while, one of the boys would run out to Broad Street to see if he was in sight. Claudia, too, must have been at wit's end, wondering why the boys were making her wait so long. At least an hour had passed since Rufus and Antonius had taken Ramesses out to the garden. The garden was surrounded by a wall, and people who went past outside couldn't see the lion. Antonius had tied Ramesses to the thickest olive tree with Xantippus's laundry line, and Rufus had brought the leg of mutton from the kitchen. Ramesses ate it in three seconds flat, and after finishing the meat, cracked the bone with his powerful teeth as though it were nothing but a bar of honeycomb. When the boys left him alone at last, he kept looking around for them expectantly. It seemed he couldn't believe that the paltry leg of mutton was all they had to offer him. Grim-faced, Xantippus walked back and forth in his room. By all the gods, where is Musius? he muttered darkly to himself. Julius scratched behind his ear. It's terrible for Caius to be held prisoner in the catacombs, he said. Maybe for the time being we can't help him, but at least we know where he is. Only the gods know why Musius isn't here yet. I know what happened to Musius, Antonius cried excitedly. You do? Are you wiser than the gods then? Publius said. The mysterious fat man isn't a man at all, but an evil spirit, Antonius went on undeterred. He noticed that Musius was following him, so he had him turned into a snake. Why a snake? Julius asked. A snake can't follow somebody very fast, Antonius explained. No, I'm wrong. He turned him into a snail. That's even slower. Flavius was impressed. I hope he doesn't turn him into a statue, he said anxiously. A magician can't do that, Antonio said. Only the gods can. If a magician did, the gods would punish him by chaining him to a rock and letting an eagle slash him to pieces as Zeus did to Prometheus for bringing fire to man. If you don't stop that drivel immediately, Antonius, I'll dish you out a juicy punishment, Xantippus snapped. Antonius was crestfallen. Xantippus never appreciated the supernatural. Rufus, Xantippus said, this time run to the corner of the forum and look for Musius. If you see him, race back here immediately and tell us. Yes, Master Xanthos, Rufus said, and he dashed out the door like an arrow. Xantippus sat down and stared at the top of his desk in deep concentration. Outdoors, it was gradually becoming light. The sandals of early risers slapped against the pavement and across the way the baker from whom the boys often bought rolls noisily flung open the shutters. We must free Caius from the catacombs as quickly as possible, said Xantippus suddenly. But how, Master Xanthos? Julius asked. Antonius told us it's crawling with murderous gladiators there. You must have overlooked that. Don't be impertinent, Julius, Xantippus said. Antonius also told us those fellows were stupid drunk. It's still early. They'll be sleeping off their intoxication. That means we have one or two hours time to attempt a rescue. We won't get past the guard at the door unnoticed, Publius interposed. I've been racking my brain over that one too, Xantippus admitted. If I hadn't, we'd already be on our way. I know what, Antonius said. I just remembered something. So, Xantippus said, what do you know this time? Udo told us he knows a secret route into the catacombs. He visited his father there secretly. His father was one of the animal keepers. If we were to find the secret route, we could outwit the guard at the door. Udo's way probably connects with the tunnel into the lion's den. Xantippus nodded his agreement. Very good, Antonius. You have a splendid memory. I've read somewhere before about the secret passageway into the catacombs. Allegedly, it is a canal through which water is released into the arena whenever a naval battle is staged. Regrettably, we don't know where the entrance to this canal is outside of the amphitheater. We may not, but Udo does, Publius said, grinning. Xantippus jumped to his feet. Antonius, Flavius, go quickly and get Udo out of the secret chamber. At your command, Master Xanthos, Antonio said, but we have no idea where your secret chamber is. Run into the kitchen and roll the big cupboard to one side. The chamber is behind it. Antonios and Flavius stormed into the kitchen. Almost at once, Antonios raced back into the room. Master Xanthos, Antonius cried, the chamber is empty. Udo is gone. Xantippus fell back in his chair. Gone? By great Jupiter, why? He said. He must have fled through the garden and climbed over the wall, Julius said. Xantippus murmured. I would never have expected him simply to run away. Why would he leave? I know. He stole your mathematical works in order to sell them and fled to Gaul with the money, Antonius offered. Publius said. He probably stole your 2,000 gold pieces, too. That goes without saying, Xantippus said calmly, but he hurried into the kitchen with surprising agility for somebody his age. When he returned, he looked considerably relieved. Not the least thing is gone, except Udo, he said. I don't understand how Udo would dare let himself be seen on the street, Julius said. He must know how risky that could be. 
If only he isn't working hand in glove with the conspirators, Publius said. Perhaps Polino smuggled him among us as a spy. His disappearance seems very suspicious to me. Don't talk such gibberish, Publius, Santavas grumbled. Polino knows nothing at all about us. No, I assume Udo ran away because he's ashamed of being a burden on me. He has a good heart, that fellow. Julius added, in any case, it's no go with the passageway into the catacombs now. Caius is lost, Flavius muttered in defeat. Xantippus pondered a moment and then said, there's one last hope to cling to, and that is Caius's father. As proconsul, Senator Venetius is the commander of the Praetorian Guard. If he sends two or three cohorts into the catacombs, even the gladiators would be powerless against them. But Venetius is still in the Senate, and the session can last for days, Julius said. No, the session ends this morning, Xantippus said. Today is the holy festival of the wine harvest. The Bacchanalia is a high feast day that even senators celebrate. Then maybe Venetius is already home, Antonius exclaimed. It's even possible that Musius is with Venetius, Publius said. He's forgotten that we're supposed to be here waiting for him and is waiting there just as anxiously as we are for him here. On to Venetius, Flavius shouted, filling with hope. The boys rushed to the door. Wait, Xantippus thundered. Put your cloaks on and pull the hoods over your heads. I wouldn't like to hear of your running into the ex-gladiator's arms again. That scared the boys and they quickly put on their cloaks. Do you know what? Antonius cried, suddenly inspired. Why not take Ramesses with us? He would scare even the fearsome ex-gladiator. Are you mad, Xantippus said? Today is a feast day. The streets around the forum will be overflowing with people, among them many women and children. If you appear with the lion, there will be wholesale panic. Please just leave Ramesses in the garden. Antonius was disappointed. Then, if I'm to bring him home, I won't be able to pick him up until tonight when it's dark, he mumbled. Go now, Xantippus said. If Musius comes, I'll send him to you. If he comes, he repeated with a sigh. Footsteps sounded in the classroom. That must be Musius, Flavius shouted ecstatically. The hanging was flung aside, and the boys froze with terror. In the doorway stood the one-eyed ex-gladiator. Beside him was the dwarf Minimus. Each of them held a knife in his hand.